Welcome back to Startup Pack. With my 25 years of development experience here at Startup Pack, we turn beginners into full stack developers in just as little as three months. Today, we'll be exploring an alternative data access method to entity framework called Dapper. Let's dive in. Do you want to start a lucrative career as a software developer? With our amazing material and awesome tutors that are available for one-on-one -on -one training, we can help make sure that you're successful. The course teaches technologies that companies use and want software developers to know. You can complete the course in as little as 12, 12 weeks. So check out startuppack.com today. And make sure to check out the link to the coding samples. We always provide the code along with our videos. So check out the link below. Also, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel because we bring you a lot of great tutorials and tips that every developer should know. Now let's get back to the... All right, so let's dive into our code sample today. And as always, make sure you download these ahead of time so you don't have to be typing all of them. So what is Dapper? Dapper is a simple object manager or micro ORM for the .NET that extends the IDB connection interface. It provides a set of extension methods for querying and executing commands against a database in a performant manner. Unlike Entity Framework, which is a full-fledged ORM, Dapper is a leaner option that focuses on speed. So one of the very first things that you want to start with is you want to open your package manager and type install, uh, whoop, probably install package dapper. Okay. Then hit enter. Once what that's going to do is then it will either update or install. I'm not going to do it because otherwise it'll mess up my thing and I already have it installed. Um, but once I do, once you do that, it will install dapper or else update it. Um, now, we're going to start with some really basic, simple use cases here. So I'm going to start with a very basic user class, pretty straightforward. Then I'm going to start with a very basic ordered class, just an ID, product, you know, all the basic stuff here. And then also start with a product class. Um, so once we have these, we need to initialize Dapper and set the connection string. So we're also going to use this one here. So I've included it here with a sample. It's a stored procedure called get user orders with details. So we're going to show you both how Dapper can use dynamic SQL uh, as well as stored procedures. I'm not a huge fan of stored procedures, but we'll show you how to use them, especially if you're working with an old legacy system. So one of the first things that you'll look at is that uh, in our data uh, order data access class. We're going to start with setting the connection string. Then after we set the connection string, you can see that we use the connection string and I always want to wrap it because it will destroy that connection as it, uh, with the .NET framework will handle it for you. Now you can see that one of the nice advantages is that the SQL query is writing your code. I really like this because this allows you to be able to manage all of your data access layer right inside of the code. And you can still organize it in a really uh, good way, but then this also allows you to track it with the repository. And also you don't have to go anywhere else looking for the SQL. I know I'll frequently in other projects, I'll have to hunt through other projects to find the SQL or open up the database. It's really nice to have it tracked in the code. And that's one of the really nice things that I like about Dapper. The other part is that if you get a really hairy query, you can optimize these queries right in your management studio or whatever database tool you use and then put this right into your code. Now I do really recommend this first one here is kind of a bad example of how to do it. Um, you want to make sure that you, well, I mean, we, uh, we're passing in. So there's two different ways that we're showing you here. One of them is more explicit. And so you can see the explicit use of a single parameter here in this use case, or you can see here where we do the execute and pass in a full complex object. So what this will do is this will map to each of the different variables inside of that as it goes to execute this. So you can see we have a pretty standard create order, which just does an insert mapping all the different parameters. And this is going to give you the parameters that you're going to use. So you can see it uses, it takes the object of the parameters and then we'll match them. And as long as the names all match up, then it will just automatically map to it correctly, which is one of the advantages. Otherwise you can see that you use um, an ordered set of parameters here where we have our at ID and then we give it the, uh, the parameter here. So if your parameter may not match. Um, and so this is really important to make sure that you're using parameters. What you don't want to do is get into any of the things where you're doing like this plus, you know, or, you know, plus order ID, et cetera, because, or user ID in this case, 
Um, because the reason you don't want to build your dynamic queries that way is because that won't protect against SQL injection. Doing this, uh, the parameters will actually get replaced and it will allow you to actually protect against SQL injection, which is really important when using your data access layers. Um, now you can see down here, we have an example of how you would actually use Dapper with uh, a stored procedure. And so we can see our stored procedure here, and this would have called into the database. Now, I'm not a big fan of stored procedures. I really find the stored procedures cause a lot of the, uh, your business logic to creep into the data, uh, into the database and be removed from code. And this just really has always been something that's been hard for me to version. Um, and I just have never really loved stored procedures for a lot of different reasons. And I've really liked that the industry has mostly moved away from them. Um, but you still, especially in old legacy applications, run into them. So here is how you would execute a, a stored procedure with that and still can pass in the parameters with it. Um, you just have to use this command type and say stored procedure. By default, this command type is actually going to default for our, our other use cases is going to default to, um, to text, right? And just to, to use to direct. Um, and so we can see how this would be used. So it'd be very simple. We set our connection string. We pass the connection string into our class. Here I've just coded up a sample order. We pass in the order and we say, hey, get order by order, order ID one. We would then query it saying one, two, three. And you could see if I passed in one, two, three, then all it's gonna do is just go and query that user and set that and do a very simple select. Um, and then you can see get users with order details and this would again execute the stored procedure. So ORMs are, are nice and I definitely really like Dapper. Um, I put a link down to the article, um, but one of the things you'll see in the article is the performance around Dapper is just amazing. Um, I, I, it's just way orders of magnitude faster than Entity Framework. And not only is it faster, but I really feel it's cleaner and I feel it gives you more control. But you can see in these examples that the author listed here that you can see the Dapper just runs circles around it. Most cases under half the, the speed or time for Dapper versus Entity Framework. So um, Dapper is just very efficient. And then what I find is really, I find that especially uh, lazy developers or new developers, uh, frequently will use Entity Framework and they don't even know what they're even pulling back. Whereas with Dapper, you can see in the queries that you have to know exactly what you're pulling back and you can list specifically into what the query is and test the queries out. So overall, I'm a really big fan of Dapper versus Entity Framework. I just really feel like Dapper uh, gives you better performance, especially for read heavy applications. You get the direct control over the SQL. Uh, you know, especially when you're dealing with an old legacy database, a lot of time entity framework gets really cranky. Or if you prefer just a lightweight tool and you want your, uh, your SQL code in your code, this is a really good way to manage it. So big fan here of Dapper and I, I've used it on all the projects I think that I've worked on over the last uh, 10 plus years. So, um, but what are your thoughts? Leave your thoughts down in the comments. I'd especially love to hear from all the entity framework fans out there. Um, make sure that you like and subscribe and leave a comment on it down below. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers. With my 25 years of development experience, we take people with zero experience and help them to train them to get ready to start as a full stack software developer in just as little as three months. So make sure you check out the link down below. Go to startuphack.com today and make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And I love hearing from the comments from you. So if you hate me and think that I'm totally wrong on Dapper versus any framework or you love Dapper, give me a shout. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Catch you guys next time. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because we bring you lots of great tutorials and tips that every developer should know. See you next time.